Im Namen Gottes Vaters, des Sohnes und des Heiligen Geistes. Amen. Gelobt zu Jesus Christus in Ewigkeit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Dear faithful in Christ, we celebrate today the first Sunday of, Lent, of, uh, of, uh, of the Lenten season. And Holy Mother, the Church, gives us in his liturgy all the advice, all the, the uh, all the needs necessary to achieve to this meta, to achieve the goal Jesus Christ gives us to go with him on Mount Calvary, to die with him and to resort with him, to become united with him on the cross and then all in, in all eternity. And as the liturgy told us in the last couple of weeks of Septuagesima, Sesagesima and Quinquagesima, that we are aware that the sin came into the world by the first parents, Adam and Eve, that there is a need for uh, expiation for repairing these sins because the first parents they broke with God who gave everything and so as last Sunday we told us the Abraham he was led into the in the new country so he was led in the country which was given to him and it is to symbolize us that we are chosen to go to the country which is prepared for us the eternal beatification the eternal Jerusalem this is symbolized by Abraham who goes out of his uh, origin Ur and is led by God in the new destination and last Wednesday we celebrated Ash Wednesday it was the official uh, opening ceremony the solemn ceremony of the Lenten season and we put ashes on our head to symbolize that we are willing to die off to die off our sins and to become always more likely to Jesus Christ because we must be unified to him in order that Jesus Christ in order that God the Father sees us as a mirror image of his son and we, told, we have told us that we have certain enemies to fight, to counterfeit. And there are enemies in us and there are enemies in, uh, out of us, surrounding us. And we told us that both of them come from the hope, uh, from the, sorry, both of them uh, come from the pride. As pride was the origin of the first sin so also in these days it's always bright it's not, not understanding that we are depending on God that we want to be completely on our own and so it's pride which brings us to fall and so we are very willing to repair for our sins and for those of our neighbors and Holy Mother, the Church doesn't hesitate to show us the importance of fasting, of really 
fighting counter against their own temptations. And we see from the Old Testament of Nineveh how God accepted and liked the fasting of the people there. It was the city of the infidels, but they understood that they were in sin and so they repaired their sins beginning from the from the king. And so God was compassionate and he forgave them and he despaired them. He did not destroy it. Instead, when did we see Sodom and Gomorrah, they were blinded completely and were not willing in any way to satisfy and to repair their sins and God cast it away like nothing. And we told us that there are three means to do this holy Lenten season, to do penitence in a, in a way the Church gives us. And there's one, it's the prayer. There's the second, there is fasting. And there's the third, there is this giving... Uh, Almgiving, almgivings, and uh, the prayers, the prayers bring us closer to God, and unites us because prayer are thinking within God, and its prayers they are they have eternal value. We are fasting, we fasting, we accept that we are sinners. We accept that we need to do penance. We accept that God gives us the possibility to do penance. It's not always easy to understand that we are guilty. When you go out in the street, many people say, I'm a good man. I didn't do anything wrong. I, I do I work, I have my family, I try to be good to everyone, but we know as Catholics that there is the sin in the world and when we see how the world moves, especially in these days, we realize yes, there is the original sin in the world, there's no doubt about it. And we have to do penance for us and for the others. It's very important. And we have told us that the base the basis, the foundation of this holy fasting must be the fear of God. Because in this fear of God we recognize that it's His eternal life which created us and it's His eternal love for us which wants the best for us. And it's not when we do fasting and we try, so to speak, to kill ourselves in our temptations, we're, do, we're doing good to us. We're taking some from us, something from us, but we're doing good for us. It's not, it's not a torture in this way that we are auto-mutilizing. No, it's the, it's the contrary. And so we told us that Jesus Christ in his whole life gave us always the most perfect example. In every step, in every word he said, there was a meaning for us. And so we just have to follow him. And in the... In the epistle in the gospel from from yesterday we saw the apostles on the boat uh, on the sea Genezareth 
and there was a strong storm so that we were very afraid and Jesus Christ he came walking on the water looking like a phantasm and so the apostles were afraid but then he made him known that he is Jesus Christ and he entered in the boat, boat and he calmed the winds and the apostles miracled. They could not explain how it is. What, what is this man that even the winds listen to him? And this gospel wants to explain us that Jesus Christ, he knows that we are not able to arrive to the other end of the river without his help. So he comes and helps us. He comes, so to say, in the middle of the way and brings us this security and he calms the winds. That means he calms all the temptations. And so when we have confidence in Jesus Christ, he certainly will come as he saved the apostles. He also wants to save us because this is his mission and he never is unfidel to his mission. And as for the fasting, we gave us two examples how severe the early church took it. Because from the very beginning they knew that by fasting it's like recruiting new soldiers and new soldiers they have to prepare themselves in order that they are able to handle the sword and all the arms and our arms as we told us prayer penitence and almonds and so we prepare us to be able to handle with those means to counterfeit the temptations and the early church the faithful even the kings they were so faithful to the obligation of the fasting that one time in the 13th century there was hunger in Portugal and the faithful were forced to eat meat in, in the time of the Lenten season, which at that time was still forbidden for the entire period of the Lenten season, but means for the all 40 days. And the Archbishop, he, he writes to Pope, at that time Pope Innocent III, to ask what he can do, in, what he can impose on the faithful for reparation. And sure, the Pope in his uh, caritas, in his charity, he grants it, but it shows us how severe they take it. And we gave us the other example of the King Wenceslaus, the King of, of Bohemia. He was ill, he was very ill so that the normal nutrition in the period of the Lenten season was not sufficient to maintain him in life. So he, he writes to Pope, Pope Benifat, Boniface, Boniface the, the eighth at that time, in the year 1297, to ask if it's allowed to him to eat meat in this period. And the Pope, the first thing he did, he, he sends two monks there to see if the situation is as it, as it was told. And when he sees that, yes, it is like this, he grants it. But still, he says, you can do it. But on Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, nevertheless, you are obliged to hold the fast. And 
when you eat fast uh, when you eat meat in the fast in the lenten season you must eat by yourself to non great scandal e felicissimo but we can see what a seal what a earnestness well what a desire all the faithful had to stay all the time within the church in the way they think in the way they dress in the way they deal with other people in the way they work in everything because we are married to Jesus Christ because we are the mystical body of Christ and the mystical body of Christ is nothing else than the spouse of Jesus Christ and we have told us that we must have a strong desire to live within this mystical body of Christ that nothing takes us away and the holy lenten season is to prepare us to have this attitude to always be more united to Jesus Christ And so we closed to explain us the epistle, uh, sorry, the gospel. In the gospel, we read about the three temptations of Jesus Christ when he was in the desert. And the three temptations represent the three types of enemies we have to counterfeit in this world it's first the concupiscence of the flesh all the the low desires our body asks from us if we don't restrain it and second the concupiscence of the eyes that means all everything, all the, uh, all the things in the world which give us uh, satisfaction, richness, fortune, prosperity and the third temptation is to show us the pride of our life because how, how oft are we to say no I don't depend on God I depend on myself I own myself I do with my body what I want I do with my life what I want I do with my family what I want no it's not so and as the devil is the prince of pride and he is completely blinded by this pride that he lives in this pride and thinks that he can bring Jesus Christ our Lord to fall because in his pride he doesn't realize he doesn't see even though he knows the prophecies but he doesn't see that this man must be God and so he tries to bring him to fall and Jesus Christ he permits it he lets he let it let it happen that he is tempted by the devil And he tempts him, but Jesus Christ always clearly refutes his desires and his wishes. And in this way we also see the attitude of Jesus Christ when, we, when he is tempted and the attitude of Eve when, he was when she was tempted. Because when Eve was tempted, she entered into the discussion 
with the devil. And the devil, he knew that he, now we start the discussion and now I can, can lead her to, to fall. And Jesus Christ, he did not. And he did not start even the discussion because he knew this it is, this it is was written, and this I have to do it. And this must be very good teaching for us. We must live in the Spirit of God, we, no, we must know the Catechism in a way that when we are tempted, we say, yes, we do it this way because the Holy Mother Church gives us this obligation. We say no because it is like this, because the Holy Mother Church forbids us. And so we don't enter in ambiguous discussions where we are absolutely to fall. Because sooner or later, when you start ambiguous discussions, it's it's impossible to stay and so we told that in the in the first temptation the response of Jesus Christ was that he says after the devil uh, tempts and says make this uh, uh, stone into bread because you did not eat for 40 days and 40 nights, so you're very hungry. Because he knows, and he tries first temptation of the flesh. And Jesus Christ says, no, I don't uh, make dirty my soul by the means of the body. Because my body serves my soul and not other way around. In the second temptation, he brings him on on the top of a of a castle, and he says, uh, "Let yourself fall down, and the angel will keep you." And Jesus Christ says, "No, it's also written that you should not tempt our Lord." And in the third temptation, the devil wants to give him the whole world and says if you kneel down and adore me I give you the whole world what a pride it's the, it's not the devil who created it and he takes it for him and says but you have to adore, adore me and there Jesus Christ says Vada Satana go away Satan you don't have any but on me. And so Satan goes away and the angels come and give him to eat. And that's what will happen for us when we resist the temptations, when we do what the church gives us in commandments, then the angel will come and will give us the food, material or spiritual, as we see many times in the Old Testament, prophets, they were imprisoned and a bird or another animal brought their food, much more spiritual food, the Holy Spirit, he goes everywhere. And so we concluded in today's sermon how important it is to have compassion with Jesus Christ and to be really united to his divinity and his humanity and to really suffer with him for our own faults and our own sins and for those of the others so we can gain in all time everywhere profit from this situation and so we wish us that every one of us takes it as serious as possible and to gain as many merits as possible in this period of the Lenten season to really restart a new life after uh, Easter 
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.